Six months pregnant, I glance over and notice that my mom and I are standing as mirror images of one another. Our hands press against our lower backs, the pressure of our growing abdomens weighing each of us down. In that moment, I can't help but think of the canceled, rescheduled, and blatantly ignored gynecologic oncology appointments I'd made for her. They continue to stack up. She continues to no-show. The silence between us is deafening. One year later, I'm sitting across from a woman in my office, and I ask about her diagnosis, her treatment planning, and what her priorities are. As a genetic counselor, I often start this way, hoping to anchor the person in front of me with how genetic testing will help us develop some concrete next steps. There's no single right answer for how to handle a diagnosis and the implications it brings for the family, but there is a best answer for each woman who walks through my door. At the mention of discussing her diagnosis with her family, she looks down and her eyes well up. She tells me, almost apologetically, that in the months leading up to her diagnosis, she was under a lot of stress. I ask about the support of her family, and in the very next breath, she explains why she can't possibly tell them. She could have, should have, maybe even would have made better choices, but she didn't, so she'll handle it. There are so many reasons she didn't come in sooner, before the pain was too much to bear. I place my hands on the table between us, more forcefully than I intend, fix my eyes on her, and then I tell her the absolute truth. You did not cause your cancer. You are not a burden. You are worthy of love and care from your friends and family. This scene repeats itself with more women than I can count. Sometimes I see a glimmer of understanding in a moment of reprieve from the guilt-laden narrative they've created. Sometimes it's just too much to break through. As I rock my third child, knowing my mom will never get a chance to do the same, my mind travels back to those fraught days before her diagnosis. When she refused to acknowledge her increasing pain and I just kept making appointments she'd never attend. I wonder if someone had had that same conversation with her. If someone had made it clear that it wasn't her fault. The cancer wasn't something she deserved or chose. Would things have turned out differently? What if I'd found my voice and wasn't paralyzed by the fear of what would come next for her? I grab my phone to make myself an appointment to learn about my preventative options. I'm determined to give my family a different story. To be the first in at least four generations to meet all of my grandchildren. I'm hopeful that the choices I make today will give them that gift. <laughs>